We're not going to waste any time. Let's dive right into it. Hope you got your notes ready, your coffee, you had breakfast. It's time to go to work. We're going to look at a case study, velocity banking, and debt snowball, how they both complement each other. Oftentimes, you listen to people on the velocity banking side, including myself. I've done this. This is me growing, being vulnerable. But uh, we tend to attack the, the other side, right? And I've done this in very unique, uh, low-key kind of ways, right? And uh, I've come to realize over the years after, you know, doing YouTube now for four plus years, created over 600 plus videos and worked with thousands of people across the U.S. and abroad, I've come to realize that different financial strategies can actually complement each other and go perfectly. And I've learned this from you guys, from my clients, from my viewers, being able to have dialogue conversation say you know what that actually does make sense yes we shouldn't do velocity banking right this second we should actually implement some debt snowball prepare ourselves for velocity banking so we don't hit any pitfalls right we don't make any mistakes so this lesson is going to really illustrate um just how powerful it is when you when you combine the two and really debt snowball is great in the beginning in the pre-game work when you don't have a debt tool or you don't have good credit or you don't have good financial discipline, right, to implement the velocity banking concept. So that can uh, be a great advantage using debt snowball to build your credit, knock down some debts, uh, lower your DTI to position yourself for velocity banking. And then knowing when to transition is a strategy in and of itself. Being able to say, okay, debt snowball took me this far, debt avalanche took me this far, it's time to amp it up, right? And we implement velocity banking, we get it going, okay? And then there's times where in your velocity banking process, it may not make sense to actually do velocity banking. This case study is going to illustrate that. It's going to show when we turn it on, velocity banking, and when we turn it off. When we turn it on, turn it off. This is a very, you know, good strategy when we're constantly looking at the numbers and not forcing velocity banking to work in our favor costing us interest and cash flow, right? We want to be able to be very aware of, of your situation, of your numbers, and constantly running the numbers on a monthly basis, just making sure, are we offsetting borrowing costs? Are we increasing cash flow? Are we going faster than debt snowball, debt avalanche? If not, we switch back, right? And then switch back to velocity banking. So let's dive right into the lesson. So here we have on the board, husband and wife, two kids. Income is $5,500 a month. Expenses are $4,800. Current debt, as of right now, we're recording in August of 2022. This, this person became a client back in 2021. And then prior to that, they had been following me for about a year. So as they were following me on YouTube, they were doing debt snowball. So they came from Seven Baby Steps, Dave Ramsey, they were already doing that. So they had a good level of discipline in their finances. And then they started watching my content, say, okay, interesting, velocity banking, got it. Okay, let me learn about this stuff, da, 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 okay. Wasn't until towards, I think, the end of December is when they actually became a client. And we still weren't doing velocity banking. They, they had applied for a uh, personal line of credit, got denied. So whenever we get denied, when we apply for a debt tool, that can... Uh, slow the process down maybe three to six months say nine months <clears throat> at max right uh so now that we're in august eight months later now we're doing velocity banking and what the heck my voice is cracking hold on <coughs> Ooh, sorry about that guys voice is cracking early in the morning mm. <clears throat> wow i need my uh <clears throat> my prayer warriors in the room if y'all don't mind, I need you to pray over my vocal cords that uh, we get through this lesson because for some reason, my throat just locked up on me. <clears throat> so we're going to muscle through this and get it going. But do me that big solid for my prayer warriors in the room, my kingdom citizens. I need you to access Holy Spirit right now. Clear my vocal cords. Have him work through me as we uh, go through this lesson. So as it is right now, total debt, 385000 $45.19. And that consists of a mortgage and one credit card. So like I said, they, they've been doing velocity banking. I mean, I mean, debt snowball knocking down other debts. So now they're just left with this credit card, $6,000 balance at 0%. 
and then the mortgage and then this credit card right here is at a zero balance but um i was just illustrating they have an eighteen thousand dollar credit limit at uh zero percent for 20 months so this is another uh debt tool he actually acquired two a personal unsecured revolving line of credit with a uh, u.s bank and then a credit card from the same bank we got a credit card and a p-lock two different debt tools that we're going to be using here in this case study and so their current cash flow as it sits is around 700 dollars a month okay so as we're looking at this situation their goal is to pay off debt right so whenever i'm coaching my clients i i'm trying to pull out the why of their finances why do they want to do what they want to do right what is it that they want to focus on and i'm just going to meet them where they're at regardless of whatever financial philosophies and concepts that that i would like to teach them so i'm just going to meet them where they're at and over time i build trust with the client with the person with you guys and then we very strategically implement new concepts right so despite what's happening in politics right in the world the general global economy right inflation is high um taxes are going up everything's going up right and you know you're probably hearing on the internet you know now's the time to make a ton of money now's the time to you know start your business and all of those things can and are say true they're they're, they're true you should be focusing on increasing income right now you should be focusing on uh, uh obtaining opportunities in the marketplace that can drastically increase your income and cash flow no doubt about it but when i'm working with people i want to make sure that I'm not selling you a strategy or a concept. Rather, you've educated yourself enough where you can tell me the strategy and now we're just tweaking. And now we're facilit now I'm facilitating that strategy, making sure you you maximize the results and the direction that you want to go in. So for this client, their goal is Denzel, I want to pay off debt. Period. And they also want to do the infinite banking concept, so they want to get a cash value life insurance policy in place and they want to do real estate investing, right? But their main priority is pay off debt. So I'm just going to meet them where they're at. I'm going to maximize on that. And then over time, we will implement new strategies along the way, uh, according to their pace, right? What, what they want to do. So now, um, in addition to the four major numbers, share with you the debt tools that they have, these two right here, and then the two, two debts. Um, this person also has a credit card where they run bills, roughly 2000 plus a month. And I put 1.5% on cashback rewards. They're actually, we can get easily more than that. So this is conservatively showing what running $2,000 a month through a credit card and getting about $30 or more per month in cashback rewards. This helps us offset our borrowing costs tremendously, right? Over a, a year's time frame, right? Or month to month even. Okay. So now looking at this, we've got a couple different options, things that we can do here. We've got this personal line of credit at this, you know, relatively high rate, 12.5%, like, uh, kind of high. But then we also have this credit card, higher credit limit, 18,000, 0% for 20 months on balance transfers. And the balance transfer fee is 3%. Okay. So what I want you to do in your notes and also comment, is I want you to tell me what you would do, right? If you were in this situation, for those who have been doing velocity banking for a while, I want you to put it in the comments. What should we do? I'm going to lay out my strategy that I went over with them that they already, you know, agreed on. But I also want people who are watching this live and then in the replays as well. I want you to illustrate, you know, a plan for this. I think this will really help us. Uh, improve and kind of see where our mindsets are at, where our, where our concepts either uh, uh, cooperatively come together or if they collide, right? Or if there's a conflict. So I'm just going to go through my strategy, what I think is the best, but I also want you to tell me, what do you think is the best way to go? All right. So knowing the information here, knowing the numbers, what our current debt tools are and what the debts are, I guided him and I said, you know what? We shouldn't use the P lock, even though you just got approved for that. Um, I don't feel comfortable using that debt tool just yet. 12.5%, this mortgage rates at 4.63. I think I could do more damage on this 4.63 with this credit card. So I said, okay, we're gonna look at my leveraging rules. 
I take the 18,000, I times that by two thirds, you're gonna get $11,880. The balance transfer fee, 3%, is gonna cost me $356.40. So I looked at that and I said, huh, we could go the other way. What would it look like if I borrowed from the PLOC instead and did a chunk? What would I be chunking at? The mortgage, right? because the other debt is at 0%. Why would I borrow at a cost to pay off this debt right here, right? That wouldn't make sense. If I was continuing to do debt snowball, debt snowball says pay this off the 6K. And in that regard, I would say, well, that doesn't make sense because that's at 0%. Why would I pay down this debt at zero when I'm getting hit on interest over here? But then the problem would be, well, when it does expire and you haven't paid it off, now you're gonna get hit with higher interest, right? So where Velocity Banking comes in and says, hey, let's leverage, pay this down, and then when this expires, we can throw that into our debt tool and pay nothing in interest, right? But I just wanna show you 8,000 times 12.5%, that's a thousand bucks for the whole year if I you know, borrowed it out for one whole year. Now, in doing velocity banking, we can dramatically reduce this number by more than 50%, right? Probably 60, but that's at still like $400. So it would be very hard to beat that borrowing cost, 356.40. Plus, 356.40 is on $11,880 as opposed to just $8,000. And I'm not leveraging the whole line. Right. Usually the rules is we only want to leverage about two thirds of the line. So that's why I looked at this 18K. I was like, you know, that's that's a fairly nice size credit card. Eleven thousand eight eighty. Throw that on the mortgage as a principal only payment. One hundred percent principal. That is going to create massive damage on that mortgage. I cannot do that if I was just doing debt snowball. So seven hundred dollars is my cash flow. 11,880 divided by 700, it would take me 16.9 months to do equal damage than Velocity Banking. So in 16.9 months, basically 17 months, it would take me to, to apply as much principal dollars to the mortgage than Velocity Banking the first month. So not only am I doing it way in advance, but I'm also 17 months ahead if we're looking at the, the effectiveness of the principal dollars that, that hits the mortgage, the earlier I hit the mortgage, the more effective the principal dollars will be. Does that make sense? So we're going to do in this strategy, 11,880, boom, principal only payment. They can do what's called a convenience check, write a check to the checking account. So money comes out of the credit card into the checking account, 11,880 from there. They make a phone call, mortgage company, right? Call them directly. Make sure, hey, I want to make a principal only payment. Got to be very clear about that. Then it gets applied. Boom, that's the first move. From there, I'm simply going to pay the monthly minimum payment for 20 months at zero interest, zero cost, right? 356.40 is my cost. Add that to the 1180, you get 12,236.40. Roughly 1.5% of the balance will be the monthly payment that's about 183 dollars and 54 cents that's going to decrease my cash flow temporarily 700 dollars right let's do that real quick 700 minus 183 54 so now my cash flow going forward goes down to 516 dollars and 46 cents at this point they've already done the chunking and the leveraging so now you're wondering, well, do we do velocity banking with a P lock now? Like what's going on? And this is where I say, here's where we turn off velocity banking, where from August all the way to March of 2023, we're simply going to stack cash flow for the next seven months. Now we're in August, but I mapped it out with a little room for error in our favor starting in September. So if you were to take that number, 516.46 times it by seven, you should get $3,615.22, okay? So the goal at this point, we've already paid down debt, 
tremendously, saved a ton of money on interest, right? That's great. I'm going to turn off velocity banking. I'm going to wait until this balance is getting ready to expire. And then we're going to turn on velocity banking again. Here's how it would look. Seven months from now, let's imagine ourselves. It's March of 2023 and the credit card's getting ready to expire. I've got $3,615.22 in my checking or savings account, right? Cash flow right there. And I've got my $8,000 personal line of credit at 12.5%. If you were to take the $75 a month times that by seven, that'll decrease the balance to 5,475 on the credit card. Right before it expires, I'm gonna chunk from the personal line of credit. Some of you guys get confused sometimes when you have capital and your line of credit and you're wondering, should I take the 3,615 and throw it on the card and then borrow the difference from the PLOC and then pay off the credit card, that would be a mistake in my opinion. You would not be um, leveraging the dollars enough, right? And I'll illustrate what that looks like real quick. So here's what it would be. So 5,475 minus 3,615.22. This is your cash capital getting one use, right? Done, money's gone, never see it again right gone so now the balance on the credit card is now one thousand eight hundred fifty nine dollars and seventy eight cents okay that was my cash flow that's all i had i stacked it for seven months straight that's all the cash flow i had so now when i borrow from the p lock at 12.5 percent although it's not a whole lot of money that one thousand eight fifty nine seventy eight what am i doing to pay that down what do I have? Le I don't have anything left other than my my expenses. So it's that's that would be the income coming in. But then there's no money left to actually pay that balance down. So do you see how whenever you're in a situation where you're either coming off of a chunk like in this situation and maybe you turned off velocity banking for a period of time, you've been stacking cash and you're like, oh, why don't I just send the cash to the to the debt that I want to hit plus my P-lock. And I would say, ha, 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 hold on. I would say, let's pull from the P-lock total, the 5475 total. And you're like, well, that doesn't make sense because you're borrowing at 12.5%. But let me show you how to bring 12.5% to zero. Zilch, nada, nothing, right? Here's what it would look like. 5,475 pulled from the P-lock to my checking account, checking account pays off the credit card in full. That's done. I now recover the $75, right? For that month that I'm in. Then I have my capital, 36,15.22, let's say, plus income, 5,500. So what happens is 36,15.22 goes into the line, 100% principal. And then my income, 5,500, damn near 100% principal going in. So here's what it would look like. 36, 15, 22 minus income plus now expenses are going to come out. Expenses reduce, right? By uh, 75 bucks and some change. So add the expenses, 4908, 54. Notice how the balance is less than if you would have chunked with your capital cash towards the debt plus pull from the line balance is less so it would so the march at the end of march my balance would be 1268.32 and then you're like well wait a minute you forgot interest okay so let's calculate it right i'm going to start calculating interest from the day that the balance goes down because i'm never paying interest on 5475 at 12.5% that's not what's happening because my principal dollars brought it down to 185978 times that by 12.5%, that's 63 cents a day, right? So you take this number, times it by the interest rate, then divide it by 365, you'll get 63 cents a day, right? Simultaneously, when you dump in your capital, we're also dumping in the income, right? And then throughout the month, when the income starts to come out of the line of credit, before that happens, what are we doing? We're using the credit card to run majority of this person's bills. So if I'm getting 1.5% in cash back rewards, and if you were to do the math where you take that balance and then this balance, 126832, times it, uh, add the two and then divide by two, and then times it by 
30 days. Okay. So I'll say that again. You add the two. So you did one point, you did 1K, 1,268, 32 times 12.5%. You got a number. You then take that number, divide by 365. You're going to get 43 uh, cents a day or so. And then add those two numbers, divide by two to get the average daily cost of borrowing, roughly. This is an overestimate, by the way. And then times that by 30 days, you're going to get $16, roughly. So $16 in borrowing costs at 12.5%. Do you see the power of when you when you drive all income and cash flow to, together? You know, cash flow is stronger to, together than when separated. So the other example was you separating your cash flow. You, you sent cash flow by itself to go die, and then you pulled from debt at a high rate versus pulling from the line of credit initially and then sending all income and cash flow to attack that high rate to where it's no longer a high rate. $16. $30 in cash back rewards, that's a wash. Borrowing costs zero. In fact, we're in the green. So for the month of March, that's what the ending balance would be. And then you add, say, 16 bucks to that to that balance. But then your cashback rewards lowers the balance less than the 126832. And this is conservative, conservative numbers all the way through. By May 2023, the line of credit is at zero. So notice how we did velocity banking in August, September 2022, right? Then we turned it off for seven months. Then we turned it on for the month of March, April, May, Velocity Banking. Then we're turning it off. After May, no need to use the line of credit. Why? We don't wanna over leverage. The guy chunked 11,880, cash flow is only $700. Remember, 700 times 17 months equals that amount of money. So we don't wanna over leverage. We've already done the damage day one. So now we're managing that damage that we're doing, right? That debt has to get cleared out at some point in time, but, but it won't because that's zero. So from May to the time that that card expires is when we'll turn Velocity Banking back on. So his goal would be to stack cash flow for 11 months. That would equal $6,506.06. The balance on that credit card that went from 12236 paying monthly payments of 183.54 times that by 19 months will bring your balance on the credit card to 8,749.14 cents. At this point, it's now April, 2024. If I didn't do anything to upgrade my debt tools, if I just stuck with the PLOC, then I would use the personal line of credit to pay off the credit card in full. Now, if you're wondering, well, how do you do that, Denzel? You only got 8K. Well, between now and 2024, I would instruct him to increase the credit limit. We can go to two to 15K, no issue, right? After one plus year of owning the line, we can apply for an increase from the bank. So very conservatively, I'd say, listen, if you went to 10K at the very least, we would have enough to wipe out the credit card balance. Same thing. We pull 100% of the balance that's owed from the PLOC paying off the credit card in full, right? So personal line of credit, pull money, lands in the checking account, checking account pays the credit card in full, done. Then income plus capital cash flow into the line balance would be wiped out much faster because now we recapture the 183.54 that's now going to the line and you're going to you're going to pay nothing in interest whatever you do pay boom gets offset by that not bad now here's what i told him i said at the very latest by april 2024 or sooner we absolutely want to upgrade our debt tool. We don't want to stay at 12.5% forever when, when we don't need to. It's not, it's not necessary, right? So what can we do? Well, we can look at a first lien HELOC or a second lien HELOC. In this case, we're looking at a situation where all debts are now gone. April 2024, all debts are now gone. Only thing that remains is the mortgage. The property of uh, the value of the current property is 500,000, probably more than that, based on what the client told me. So if I got a first lien HELOC, 90% of the LTV, I could probably get about 450K as, at a first lien HELOC and eliminate the entire first lien mortgage in one shot and recapture all that cash flow right here and have it sit in my debt tool. And then I just do velocity banking on the debt tool for as long as I want 
right? It, you're just facilitating the the 350 plus thousand dollar you know debt at that point. In fact, it's going to be way lower than that because we would have been paying 2986.72 for 20 months. This whole entire strategy is a, is a, is a 20 month time frame, 2021 month time frame from now all the way to April 2024. So I instructed him i said hey at the very latest we want to get a first lien heloc by april 2024 sooner the very latest the soonest i'm i'm thinking dude we could go get the information now just to see if we qualify what position that we're in you know see if it makes sense and then more conservatively i was thinking somewhere around here may of 2023 between that time frame we're not doing velocity banking so credit score should be up, right? The, the, the reason why he probably wouldn't get approved for first lien HELOC now is because he just applied for two debt tools, the PLOC and that credit card, just got approved for those things. So we wanna let our credit score kind of season a bit, let it go back up again. We wanna get it above 720 plus, 750 or so, right? The higher, the better across the board. And so by May, I'm not doing velocity banking. I've officially knocked out a ton of different debts, all right, or in this case, just the one. The credit card's done, mortgage balance is lower, the credit card balance is lower, right? The line of credit's at zero, okay? So between May and say as far as like December of 2023 in that time frame, I would say go for a first lien HELOC. And then by April 2024, we would then move the balance of the credit card into the HELOC instead of the, the PLOC. And then the PLOC can just stay there as a reserve. Credit cards as a reserve, no problem there. So then if I was to look at a first lien HELOC at the very latest, April 2024, let's say um, take the balance 368209 minus 11,880. That's what the balance goes down to in 2022, right? So we'll write that here. Then for 20 months or so, I'll just write 20 months, we're doing, we're still paying our mortgage payments. Nothing changes there. 2986.72 times 20 payments is 59 grand. Take that number and conservatively times it by say 30%. Say 30% went to principal, probably more. We're being conservative, quick math here. So 356, 329, minus 17,920.32. So now the balance, 2024, somewhere around here on the mortgage, right? Not bad. Again, that balance will be lower because I very, this whole thing is conservative, right? So that would be around what would be owed in the line of credit on a first lien HELOC. So if I got 450,000 as my credit limit, minus 338 or 08. So I've got available credit, 111,032. Now let's say he got a first lien HELOC at First Savings Bank, which is a bank I've been promoting lately, made a strategic relationship with them where they, um, have a very uniquely designed first lien HELOC where it's it's the HELOC, it's the mortgage, it's a checking account, it's all in one. And they have a very unique sweep feature which allows you to truly maximize every single dollar in the line itself. And on top of that, they do have some fixed rate options. So for example, let's say they, they went that route, you could lock in a 5.9% rate for three years, not bad. So I'll use that number. I'll say, okay, 338,408, 68 times 5.9%, divide by 12. That would be my uh, interest only payment, okay? Notice how compared to this number, what would be the difference? 29.86 minus, so you would have $1,300 or so now working in our favor, principal wise, and then understand we're not going to pay this amount. We're going to reduce that quite a bit. How? Velocity banking, dumping all income in, leveraging the credit card, cashback rewards that, you know, just by floating expenses in the credit card lowers the borrowing costs. So I can bring 5.9 below 4.63, right? Plus that payment itself is now going to work stronger and more effectively in this tool as opposed to a traditional uh, mortgage. And the other cool part is we don't necessarily have to pay off all the debt, right? We can just do velocity banking on the line and we have access to all this equity 
to maybe do some real estate investing, maybe get educated, buy a program, get some coaching, start a business. He now has plenty of capital to work with. The first lien HELOC is his savings account, is his checking account, is his sinking funds. It's everything all in one. Very safe, protected product. It's your first lien. It's not a second lien, right? So we've got all that equity available and you're constantly creating more and more equity along the way as you're doing velocity banking at that point it's fully automatic i can automatically send my paychecks directly into the line pay my bills directly out of the line the credit card takes care of the rest the credit card can get attached to the first lien heloc in terms of auto pay so the first lien heloc can automatically pay your credit card in full each and every month avoiding interest so talk about velocity banking fully automated not bad so this is a wonderful example of debt snowball and velocity banking coming together full transparency gave you the numbers right you go back you run your numbers you do this and you say okay look i know that's it we're not going to argue anymore velocity banking has its position debt snowball has its position how can it complement each other right ran through the numbers just from the first move i'm way ahead of debt snowball but i also don't throw out debt snowball because why look we we turned on snowball in terms of stacking cash flow we stopped we turned off velocity banking and turned it back on and turned it off and turned it back on right and that this usually happens when i'm dealing with um debt tools that have higher interest rates like above 10 right and in situations where there's multiple debt tools in this case you had a credit card that we could leverage and a line of credit. So I'm looking to leverage at the least cost possible.